honesty, passion, experience. It's Timberwolves Explosion, hosted on the sportstuff.com. And now, your host, Paladino Joey. Extra, extra, hear all about it. Extra, extra, hear all about it. I'm your host, Paladino Joey, or Joey Awajan. Timberwolves Explosion is available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Podman, Spotify, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, Audible, Stitcher, and Double Twist. Thank you always and forever for downloading and listening to the show. Great to be on board with you once again today. As, of course, this is an extra. The most recent Timberwolves Explosion was recorded just two days ago, but looks like the Minnesota Timberwolves may have a new ownership group. And, well, I guess there's a familiar name after all. That was the conversation. Alex Rodriguez. That's right, Alex Rodriguez and former Walmart CEO Mark Lowe. Mark Eric Lohr. Lohr, pardon me. Uh, his net worth is over $1 billion. Apparently, according to The Sun, the uh, that Alex Rodriguez's net worth is approximately $350 million. But uh, likely, in the course of time, these two guys will be splitting down the middle uh, the amount of ownership. They'll be the two main owners of the Minnesota Timberwolves, of course, with partners. Wouldn't be surprised if Glenn Taylor stayed on as a minority owner for the rest of his life. Maybe like the Taylor family, this and that. Would not be surprised one bit. And that would actually probably help uh, restrict these guys from possibly moving the franchise. That's obviously a big fear. And, of course, there'll be other minority owners jumping on board. But uh, the sale price is apparently $1.5 billion. So that would mean $750 million Generally speaking, it was split between two people, but you get the idea. There's going to be other minority owners mixed in. There, there always will be. And heck, you know, I mean, <laughs> you wouldn't want to just have two people and that's it. Every franchise has several owners. It's just there's the, the the figureheads, the guys that are like the chairman, so to speak. Might be two chairmen of the boards, so to speak. In this case, Alex Rodriguez and uh, Mr. Mark Lohr, who's been a CEO of Walmart, of all things. Uh, apparently, Walmart purchased Jet for $3.3 billion dollars. Not too long ago, um, uh, Mark Laura owned Jet.com, so obviously lots and lots of money coming in. Both of these guys are from New York City, so, well, the franchise won't be moving to New York City or anything. That's one thing we don't have to worry about. There's always fear about pod, the possibility of the Timberwolves getting moved to Seattle or <coughs> Las Vegas, but local guy, of course, AP, AP, AP Krasinski, but now it's obviously Johnny Athletic. John Krasinski, the guy who covers the Timberwolves, he's the most basically the most well-known uh, Timberwolves guy when it comes to the local media via The Athletic. And, of course, you have guys like Britt Robson, Mr. Uh, Moore out there as well, Dana Moore, guys like that, Dane Moore out there. Uh, Darren Doogie Wolfson likes to have the scoop and all that. This one kind of came out of left field. It's kind of exciting. It's pretty interesting. Uh, Alex Rodriguez basically stated here, we look forward to entering this phase of the process with Glenn Taylor, our respect for him and the legacy he has built lays an amazing foundation for what is to come. We are excited by the prospect of getting to know the Timberwolves organization, the talented team, and their incredible fans, Rodriguez and Laura said in a statement. So it's basically both of them. The talk is that, uh, and again, this is according to Johnny K, Johnny Krasinski of the, of the Athletic, Rodriguez and Laura have a 30-day exclusive negotiating window to try to finalize the deal uh, if if a deal proceeds, Laura and Rodriguez will join as limited partners for two and a half years before eventually taking control of the franchise. So it's kind of like a slow process. He even mentioned this as a possibility, him being Glenn Taylor a couple of years ago, uh, or at least a year and a half ago, something like that, when all this started up. About a, about a year, actually about a year ago, when all this got started up, that he would like somebody to kind of come in and they could be kind of groomed and nurtured and be ready to go when it comes to the NBA. Of course, uh, you hope that these guys don't take on a whole lot of Glenn Taylor's traits moving forward. Obviously, Glenn Taylor, a very questioned figure when it comes to how well he's run the Timberwolves the past 25 years, 26 years since 1994. It's been, gosh, almost 27 years. He bought them in the spring of 94 for about $50 million. So, hell of a deal. Hell of a deal for Glenn Taylor. I think it was about $53 million. Hell of a deal. Uh, <laughs> one of the great ones of all time was Donald Sterling purchased the Clippers, I think it was for like $20 million, and then ended up selling them, being forced to sell them, but he came out pretty good, $2.5 billion from Steve Ballmer. Basically, uh, he was forced to sell and still came out okay, $2.5 billion. 
for Donald Sterling, the former owner of the Los Angeles Clippers, who was accused of nine bajillion things, uh, most notably, yeah, we'll just leave that alone for today. <laughs> <laughs> Glenn Taylor may finally be moving on as the owner eventually in the next couple of years. Uh, conversations, all the fears, all of us are afraid of the team possibly moving, but John Krasinski might calm some of your fears a little bit, and I'll give you this soundbite from the Sunday Sermons show from Dan Barrero. It's a Sunday show in the morning. Obviously, you have bumper to bumper with Barrero Monday through Friday on KFAN and on Sunday mornings starting at about 9 a.m., uh, Dan Barrero does Sunday sermons, 9 to 11 every day. And here's what Johnny K had to tell Dan Barrero and the audience. And, um, look, I, I will say it is perfectly understandable for Timberwolves fans to be nervous when an out-of-town buyer comes in and, 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 wants to, and is going to buy the team. That, that, yeah, you should be nervous about uh, a possible move uh, in that situation. But here's the larger context that everyone needs to factor in to this equation. The, the NBA as an entity, has lost a ton of money over the last year with the pandemic. The owners are very, very motivated to get that money back some way, somehow. One of the very quickest fixes, in addition to a new lucrative TV deal that's going to be coming, but one of the very quickest fixes is to expand and not to move teams. So the, the league right now is having discussions about expansion and about the $2.5 billion price tag that an expansion team in Seattle and an expansion team in Las Vegas or Vancouver or, or wherever would, would bring. That is a lot more money than a 500 or a billion dollar relocation fee that the Timberwolves would pay for it. So there is a lot more momentum toward a, an expansion in Seattle and Vegas than any move. And if the league expands in both of those cities, then where does where do the Wolves go? Are they going to Pittsburgh? Are they going to Kansas City? No. What the other thing that people have to understand is, despite this team not having a great following right now because they've been so bad, the Twin Cities are a top 14 market in the country. Like that, the league looks favorably upon this market that they want to be in. They just need a good team in this market. And so that's all of the things to say it is unlikely that a move will happen. I can never say never. I understand the nervousness and the skepticism. But those factors outside of whatever it is that Rodriguez and Lori, or if it was somebody else that comes in, those are the factors that are weighing toward the team staying here versus moving. Does that make you feel better? I, I feel a little bit better, honestly, after all that. Um, and, of course, you know, it's just... You'd think that's the thought process of the league and all that as well, that they'd rather go with expansion. Obviously, it's more money for the NBA, this and that. And you'd think, again, they can do it. The NBA can do it. It's not like, oh, my God, it's going to kill the league. It's not going to kill the league. Obviously, it sucks to have uh, expansion drafts and all that, but I just don't see it killing the league and all that. And Seattle and Vegas, they'll find a way to work things out one way or another especially Las Vegas. I mean, they, they, they're they doing good. Las Vegas is doing good. I mean, look at the Golden Knights. Absolutely spectacular. And some other big shot will probably take over that franchise. Who knows? Maybe the same guy that owns the, uh, the uh, Las Vegas Golden Knights might take over for the Las Vegas uh, Hardcourt Club. I don't know. The uh, Hardcourt Knights or the Desert Knights. Maybe they'll call them the Desert Knights. Maybe, maybe that name will still be a possibility. Or the Silver Knights. No, the Silver Knights are their minor league team now. So at least that name did happen. Those were the three possible names for that team. It was funny. The Golden Knights, the Silver Knights, and the Desert Knights. I kept thinking, here come the Desert Knights. But maybe somehow, some way, it would be a little bit too similar to the uh, Phoenix Coyotes. It would be too deserty. I don't know. <laughs> what am I talking about? But the uh, Desert Basketball team, besides the Suns, uh, eventually will be there. And I think the Seattle Supersonics will be around as well as their own franchise. And I think they should. Um, and that way, I think it would be especially for Seattle because... The Oklahoma City Thunder left all the Seattle history in Seattle, which I wish the Los Angeles Lakers did for Minneapolis. I really wish they did that. And they called them the Los Angeles Ocean Liners or the Los Angeles Waves or the Los Angeles something fancier than something fancier than the names I just thought of. Uh, and we could have kept the name Lakers. Maybe we could have still been the Minneapolis Lakers in Target Center. But, well, I guess that name is... Uh, uh, that name is long gone, obviously. That's Los Angeles where they steal everything. They just steal. They just steal things, including five championships that were won in Minneapolis. They're just crooks. A bunch of crooks. Bastards. But, uh, yeah, Seattle, at least Oklahoma City, their owner, at least gave them that courtesy. Even though it's been a long time since they've had a team now. I mean, they left in 07. Um, but at least if the Seattle Supersonics get to start a new franchise, hopefully they bring back the green and gold look and the classic logo with the city in the background. I would like that very much. Don't be like the Winnipeg Jets and start brand new. I didn't like what they did when the Atlanta Thrashers moved to uh, the Win uh, moved to Winnipeg to bring back the Winnipeg Jets name, but then said, hell with the history, hell with the, the old logo and everything, except for like special occasions. That was BS. 
I hope Seattle Supersonics uh, become the Seattle Supersonics again and look like the Seattle Supersonics again. Not like the uh, the most recent logo, but the one the circa 1994 and earlier. Oh, God, that was so awesome. I love that logo during the whole 80s and such. It was so sweet. Um, and then Las Vegas, we'll see what the heck they call them. But uh, I'm getting a vibe like they're not going to move the team. Uh, there's always a possibility anything can happen, and the fine would be only $50 million to leave the lease. Obviously, for any of us listening, $50 million is like, whoa, oh my God. You know, like I would never even consider, even I wouldn't even sneeze at the idea of moving the team in a in 100 years. But those guys... If you can buy a team for 1.5 billion, they'll figure out they'll figure out a way to come up with 50 mil to pay the penalty to uh, say screw your screw your lease for the next 15 years, whatever it would be in Target Center to 2035. Screw your lease, and they might have to do that anyway to build a new uh, arena or something. Because I think the possibility of that building lasting till 2035 is very slim, unfortunately. But um, we all we all know how this quote unquote pandemic and loss of money and this and that. It's like, what's the last thing you want to do is have to build a new stadium. That's bullcrap, you know, for these billionaire owners. You know, we all know how people freak out about that kind of thing as well, but we'll see what happens. Maybe they can build their own building, which I think would be much better, actually. It would be much better, because that's the conversation as well, how the Timberwolves do not own the building. It's it's the city of Minneapolis, this and that. It would be nice to have an owner that would actually be able to build their own building at some point. They'd actually make more money out of it. You're not like a, you're not a tenant. You are the owner. It's your building, which actually would be kick ass if they're able to pull that off. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, a guy with the uh, pockets as deep as Mark Lore, there might be a shot. Might be a shot. But they're saying only one billion plus. They're not saying like three billion. So maybe it's one point five or something, which actually is less than Glenn Taylor. But well, a, a- Rod. We'll see what happens there. It's going to be interesting. Now this guy's owned a lot of money, uh, a lot of different organizations. Has Mark Lore. And same situation, Lore, with uh, same situation, it's, it is Lore, uh, same situation as uh, Alex Rodriguez. He's invested all over the place. He made about $455 million during the course of his baseball career, which lasted 22 seasons. He was Rookie of the Year with the Seattle Mariners. That's the part that makes people nervous a little bit, but it didn't necessarily end super well in Seattle. I think they kind of hated him because he took off for $150 million for the uh, for the Texas Rangers years ago. And then he got, uh, and then he went, and he got traded to the Yankees, who are more likely to afford him even more than the Texas Rangers. And then had a great 2009 season and got a raise. He opted out to get a raise, <laughs> and then right after that was accused of a being a fraud and this and that. So that's where a lot of people are uh, always bashing him and hating on him and all that, all about the money and cheating and all that stuff. But. Well, I'm over it. I kind of like Alex Rodriguez a little bit. I, I kind of like him. You know, he doesn't bother me. I kind of like him, and if he's the owner of the Timberwolves and he keeps them here and he can bring some pizzazz and some just some young blood into the franchise, it can help boost things in the right direction. Hey, go Alex Rodriguez. Go, go A-Rod. I think that'd be great. Get a little New York Yankees personality here in uh, Target Center. What are the odds of that? Yankees? Timberwolves? Let's see, the winningest franchise in the history of professional sports and the losingest franchise in the history of professional sports colliding together. So what's going to be, what kind of storm is that going to create? We'll see. <laughs> it's going to be really interesting. That's like, you know, like 40 below combining with like unbelievable heat and humidity. 40 below, obviously you're talking extremely dry and extremely cold colliding together. What do you get there? Whoa, that would be quite a storm. Um, but that's about, that's about the equivalent if you're talking about weather. <laughs> A-Rod only has one ring, only, but that's a lot more than zero. Um, but he still comes from the Yankees, so, you know, it's very interesting. And he came from New York in the first place when he went to the Seattle uh, Mariners years ago. <clears throat> and we'll see. Uh, I think the bigger fear here, if anything, is what if they decide to sell the team in only like five five to ten years, and then then who are they going to sell the team to? Because they that, that's where the real fear comes in, is if they're just kind of like a short-term thing here. They just want to make a couple bucks and move on. Otherwise, if they want to hang around and have some fun and maybe turn this thing into something special for the next 25 years or something, then okay, rock and roll. But if they're looking to uh, sell the team in only 5 or 10 years, that's where my fear comes in because that's when it could get interesting. <clears throat> that's when it could be negative, this and that, where I, these guys don't move the team, but maybe the next owner does. We'll see. We'll see what the situation is. It depends on how much uh, revenue this franchise can build during the course of the uh, ownership of these guys. 
after two and a half years, get, getting things rolling in the right direction once they take over, see how much revenue they can uh, build up for the next five years after that or so. It's going to be super interesting, but um, it's not Glenn Taylor. That's a good thing. A lot of people have had enough. Thank you, Glenn Taylor, for saving the franchise from the jaws of, of defeat, so to speak, from the jaws of getting, of leaving. It just shows how much Marvin Harve gave a crap about Minneapolis and Minnesota and all that stuff because they were willing to sell the team to an ownership group that absolutely was moving them to New Orleans. They were absolutely moving them to New Orleans, and the NBA did not ratify the deal at all. The NBA said, nope, it was a unanimous no to the city of New Orleans, which that's the one thing that might be another thing we can we can be happy about is the possibility that the league may vote no to the team moving, just like with the Sacramento Kings. They voted no. Like, nope, you're not moving. So to, to Seattle, even though you think Seattle is better than Sacramento, well, the, the league voted no. So maybe the league would do the same for us like they did many years ago um, with Arnie Carlson and... Um, uh, David Stern years ago, God rest his soul. Um, I don't think Adam Silver would be thrilled about the Wolves moving to Seattle or even Las Vegas. I think he'd be much happier about the uh, NBA creating the franchises and somebody purchasing them for $2.5 billion from the NBA and then rock and roll. Uh, obviously, the, you get things watered down a little bit more, but who cares? There's a lot of players that probably deserve to be in the NBA that aren't in the NBA right now. And there's a lot of dead weight and junk that's in the NBA that shouldn't be. But welcome to the world of professional sports. I mean, there's a billion NFL players that are playing, you know, in other leagues, and a bunch of junk in the NFL. Just uh, kind of like that's just kind of like how life is. But it'll give some of those guys more of a shot at uh, getting in the pros that way, with more jobs being available. Yes, Jennifer Lopez is still involved. Oh goody! I've never been a fan of Jennifer Lopez. I talk about overrated. <laughs> I'm just not a fan. It is what it is, but, <clears throat> well, it is what it is. I don't think she'll be really involved with the Timberwolves. I don't think she'll be speaking at any press conferences or anything. It'll be interesting. Uh, Alex Rodriguez, obviously, I like his personality on the television, you know, and, you know, I, I think he's good at what he does, and uh, obviously you got the businessman working with him. So um, it's going to be a very interesting uh, two and a half years here leading into the, the next step here. Unless this whole thing falls through at the last second, but I doubt it. It, uh, it, they're literally comparing it to how Glenn Taylor just came in out of nowhere and bam, done deal. Like because he had the money and he was the right guy. He just was the right guy at the time. Uh, little did we know how things would go the wrong way years later, particularly in the uh, later years of Garnett being here. Things just kept getting worse and worse. It was disappointing. I thought in the first couple of years of Glenn Taylor's run with many with with the Timberwolves, he was all right. He was all right, and then just things gradually got worse and worse. Mostly uh, loyalty to a fall to the McHales and such, and you could argue uh, McHale and Flip Saunders probably could have, could have, should have been let go after they got swept by the Dallas Mavericks in the uh, 2001 season. Personally, if I was the owner of the Timberwolves, I would make a change that year. After the Wolves had failed for, was it five years in a row, and they got swept in the first round by the Mavericks, I would have made the change. It's not personal, it's business. McHale fired. And flip the same thing. Of course, this is not tra- this is not kicking anybody or anybody anything like that. And it's not disrespecting the dead. It's just it's just business. It's just that would have been my business approach back in the day, back 19 years ago, after that situation. Um, we'll see what happens. We'll see how Alex Rodriguez and uh, and Lore feel about uh, Gerson Rosas. I think Chris Finch is a good coach, but we'll see. Maybe he's not. I I think he is, from what I can tell so far. I, I like the way he talks. I like the way he thinks. I like the common sense, and I like the I like kind of the strength that he has. He seems like a stronger personality than, say, Ryan Saunders, who just, I don't know if he was nervous or he just didn't get people to listen or what the problem was. It's too bad. But uh, where Finch just, you can tell he's a fun guy. He's got a good personality, but he can get serious real quick, and I like that. Uh, hopefully A-Rod feels the same. Talk is how competitive A-Rod and uh, Mark Laurie are at the end of the day, and maybe that can really get things rolling in the right direction. Maybe they'll be kind of like Craig Leopold without being too crazy. Uh, where Craig Leopold went a little crazy with those 13 million, uh, 13 year contracts for Zach Crazy and Ryan Suter. That has not worked out. Luckily, though, after a couple more attempts, he got the right general manager in. Uh, Chuck Fletcher was a, an upgrade over <laughs> Doug Risebro, but not much of an upgrade. He was an upgrade. And then Paul Fenton was crazy, but he was, he was really good at scouting, but he was crazy and he hated people. And Bill Guerin looks fantastic. So we'll see how A-Rod and uh, 
Mark Laurie approach things with uh, Cruz and Rosas in the next couple of years. That's the other good part, is it doesn't look like we'll be just giving up on Rosas super quickly, even though I was getting frustrated. It looks better now. Uh, that's the hope here going forward. It looks better. Like, at least Finch plays tall guys out there. It's not just like six foot seven and then 6'4", 6'4", six, four, six, four, oh, six, you know, and then, like, and that's it. It's just a bunch of small people. And then, like, you got McLaughlin and Rubio. You know, it's like, are you kidding? You know, like two six four guys, a six seven guy. <laughs> that was like when Carl was out and such. When you have taller players and he wasn't playing them, Mr. Uh, uh, Ryan Saunders and such, the small ball stuff was driving me nuts. Uh, and I thought that was just Gerson Rosas' vision, but maybe it wasn't. Turns out maybe not because Chris Finch is more of a big man kind of a guy at the end of the day, even though he was a guard when he played. He's kind of a little bit of everything. He's more about balance, but also, again, big men do well under uh, Chris Finch historically. So we'll see how uh, Alex Rodriguez and Lore uh, approach things in the next year and a half or uh, uh, two and a half years with, with these guys. We'll see. We'll see if it's a long, healthy, solid relationship and uh, things head in the right direction under new ownership eventually. So it's going to be fun. It's going to be cool. And I get it. I guess I guess it is what it is. Everything is a long process, but at least there's light at the end of the tunnel for those of us that were ready to move on from Glenn Taylor. I can definitely see Alex Rodriguez and Mark Laurie uh, patching things up with Kevin Garnett at some point, especially Alex Rodriguez. I just got a shot. I, I got a belief that Alex Rodriguez will look to patch things up uh, at the end of the day with Kevin Garnett, and then we could have something really cool going on. I can just see Alex Rodriguez right now holding a, a Garnett jersey up in the air, like a frame jersey or something, and uh, clapping and, you know, applauding Kevin Garnett's career. I got a vibe there. I just got a feeling. I could see that happening. And I think that'd be pretty cool to watch for those of you out there that would love to see that happen. And you know what? Myself included. I've been a critic of Kevin Garnett's behavior, and even on the court at times, I was a critic of him. I wasn't 100%, you know, <laughs> lime green and blueberry uh, shades fan for Kevin Garnett the last 25 years or whatever. I'm just being honest with you. I haven't been. Uh, in the early days I was, and then I started to change around that 2001. Right around that time is when my, my attitude started to change and I became a little bit more like, damn it, I want more. This is BS. When it came to everybody. Flip, uh, Kevin McHale, and Kevin Garnett. I started to get frustrated, and I've pretty much been there ever since. <laughs> yeah, for obvious reasons, especially after 04, when uh, things did not ultimately work out. 04 and 05. So with that said, there are your new owners, most likely, in a 30-day period, we'll find out for sure if they are indeed going to be the new owners and temporary temporary partners and eventually the main owners. For now, they'll be limited partners and eventually work their way up in the next two and a half years. With that, we'll take uh, we'll, we'll take leave now until next Friday. Again, the strong possibility of lawn cleanups taking over my schedule again in the mornings very much exists, so the release of this show may or may not be sporadic, like the old Rainy Days and Mondays song, but it might be just Rainy Days and Sundays is more like it. Like, right now it's a Sunday, but like Rainy Days and Sundays might end up being the time I may record this show, depending on this, depending on that, but at least there is news now, legitimate news about a possible new ownership group coming in for the Minnesota Timberwolves moving forward. Please do Write a positive rating for Timberwolves Explosion if you could on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or I mean, excuse me, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or Audible. Those are the three apps that uh, provide that at this time. Maybe others do as well that I don't know about. Writing a positive rating if you could please do that. Uh, join the show via audio submission would be greatly appreciated. Greatly, greatly appreciated. Uh, at the end of the day, I think I had a comment from. Uh, yeah, I did. I had a comment from Mister. Wayne Hunt as well. Sorry for being a bit bouncing around, but again, I'll talk about the auto submission really quick as I load this up. All you got to do is open up your smart device. There should be a free voice recording application on any of them out there. That's they're out there, billions of them. You know, so it's like it's nothing that's hard to find. Simply press record, talk, and then hit stop after you get to five minutes or so, or less or more. Who knows? Depending on what you have to say. And then you just share slash email it to Paladino Live at Yahoo.com. Paladino Live at Yahoo.com. So I guess right now we'll kind of get into a very brief fan interaction. Might as well because of this topic. And, of course, ones that may bleed in after this particular episode we'll read on the next show as well. At T-Wolves EX. At T-Wolves EX is the Twitter account. Not sure. There's got to be. Yeah, there's some notifications. I know Vince Germano and a few others. Yep, Nick Timas. Yeah, Nick Timas was very... 
excited as well. We'll get back to that in a couple seconds. want to thank uh, Tanae Brown, Vince Germano, and Derek Felska for retweeting the most recent episode. Tanae Brown from New Zealand, Vince Germano from Australia, and Derek Felska from Western Wisconsin, but ultimately from Minnesota, originally retweeting episode 302. Levi Brown, I think he did as well. Uh, Vince Germano said, my God, Wolves defense is terrible. It's doing my head in, and God, yes, it was. Yes, yes, it was in that most recent game. We'll get back to that very shortly as we're in, in the next episode, whenever that records. Hopefully it is Friday. And Vince Germano sharing it to myself and Tene Brown. Uh, while the Woj Bomb, former major leaguer Alex Rodriguez and billionaire Mark Lore are finalizing a deal to purchase the Minnesota Timberwolves from majority owner Glenn Taylor. Sources tell ESPN Taylor will continue full control of the team for two years before Rodriguez and Laurie take over in 2023. Yes, sir, as Vince likes to say. Tanae Brown says, thank God. Vince Germano says, not sure they need to be mentored by Taylor, though. Ha ha. That's what I'm thinking, too. Not sure they need to be mentored by Taylor. Just don't be overly loyal. How about that? Don't be overly loyal. And there's Nick Demas. Yep, breaking the athletic. Alex Rodriguez is negotiating to become a limited owner of the Timberwolves. A-Rod. Hashtag A-Rod. Not hashtag. At A-Rod. And partner Mark Laurie have signed a letter of intent and are negotiating with Glenn Taylor, but no final agreements have been made. Sources tell Johnny Craw. So basically, they've agreed, they've agreed on the money, and there's a couple other small things to come. But that's the main deal is the money. The 1.5 is the amount of money coming to Glenn Taylor. Uh... Vince Germano's responding to something I said. I'm saying, praying to God, there's no secret plan to move the club away. Vince Germano says, me too, mate. Surely, surely, Taylor wouldn't sell to a group without a guarantee that wouldn't happen. And yeah, that's true. But again, there's, you never know. Once they're the owners, they're the owners. You know, I mean, like, you know how it goes, you know. People move. I mean, people can make their own decisions, unfortunately. But the NBA, hopefully, would butt in and say, nope at the end of the day. And here I am sharing the same thing, and we'll wrap things up with what Wayne Hunt had to say shortly. There it is, Alex Rodriguez, the same athletic I shared on Facebook. Tanae Brown jumps in and says, All the reports are saying the right things about the team staying in Minnesota, which is great, too. NBA prefers expansion over relocation. Yep, yep, yep. That's what Johnny Cross said, too, and that's great. I'm so glad about that. And I, yeah, I would, too, if I was the NBA. Uh, let's home with the, Let's hope this group builds a better culture than Taylor. And with Taylor turning 80, I would have hated for something to happen and for his family to sell to the highest bidder as opposed to finding someone to keep the team in Minnesota. That is a win for the uh, that is a win for the Wolves in all aspects, I think. I think so as well. Uh, yeah, and it's a very, you know, it's a positive way to look at it and I, I agree. I agree. I, it's, you know, I, I'd be more, I, I'm more positive about it than what some people might think, right? <laughs> Wayne Hunt I do believe he has something to say, and I'm sure he does. Like, none of us are really thrilled about Glenn Taylor being here, or being the owner. I had it up. I, of course, I don't have it at the second. And there is Wayne Hunt right here. Glenn Taylor, let us let us show you the door. Wayne Hunt of the Courtside Podcast, by the way. Here's hoping A-Rod can bring change to the franchise and a winning attitude. We spoke about... We spoke about on the show, episode seven, uh, 370, pardon me, about how bad teams like Sacramento and the Timberwolves remain bad because uh, because of the bad culture. Yeah, we're stuck that way because of the bad culture. No owner is going to fire himself, but this sale go, but if this sale goes through, it could be better than any draft pick the Wolves have ever had. <laughs> Much needed change is what the Wolves need heading into next season. Thoughts? I agree. Uh, 1,000%. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to move on. As much as I think Garnett's been a jackass to Glenn Taylor, it, it is what it is. I mean, it's the only way to fix it, I guess. Fix that relationship is to move on from Taylor. Uh, and Taylor has made so many mistakes over the course of time. The David Kahn hiring the... Honestly, making Tom Thibodeau the president of operations was a mistake. He's a good coach, but it was a he's not a president of operations. He's just not. Uh, Alex Rodriguez hopefully can bring some of that New York Yankee magic into Minnesota, and Mark Laurie has had much success during the course of his time being the, you know, being uh, the CEO of Walmart and such. He's had incredible business success, Jet.com and all that, so it's going to be fascinating. Uh, obviously, remember, though, that in fact it's going to be two and a half years, though, before these guys officially take over, so it'll be like the start of the 2023-2024, I believe. 
yeah, 2023-2024 season, so it is like two and a half years away, unfortunately. So it's going to be time before they're the real full-on owners of the club. But um, when that day comes, it'll be great. For now, they get to be nurtured by Glenn Taylor. But hopefully it's just uh, some of the business, the common sense business asp uh, aspects of it and all that, not like uh, strategies going forward. I'm guessing they have their own personalities, their own strategies, and they won't follow him in lockstep going forward. And, again, most importantly, keep the team in Minnesota at the end of the day. Definitely a familiar name. That was the talk that a very familiar name could emerge, but uh, this probably isn't the person. <sighs> this isn't the person because it was an NBA person. This is a Major League Baseball player. Uh, not that, not not all that long ago. So, and one of the biggest names of all time, frankly, during during our lifetimes. <clears throat> Some of us where he started back in uh, the started back in the early to mid '90s as a 19 year old kid, and you know was a phenom right away. Number one overall pick in the draft, and all that, which Garnett probably should have been in '95 as a 19 year old. So he he should have been, but at the end of the day, that's where we're going to leave things. Again, I already talked about the uh, <laughs> leaving a positive rating on iTunes. Uh, Stitcher or Audible. Greatly appreciate that. In hindsight, tell your friends about the show. Submit an audio submission. Keep in touch like you have been, like uh, Wayne Hines, Vince Germano, Tanae Brown. Always love it. Keep in touch. Keep them coming. Nick Timas as well from Pennsylvania. Keep them coming. Other Australians out there, other people in the United States or locally in Minnesota, the Jeff Johnsons and such. Hope I didn't piss off too many local people, but it is what it is. I appreciate every one of you that actually does, uh, does listen and is loyal to the show. And those that aren't, it, it is what it is. It's your choice <laughs> at the end of the day. Until uh, until Friday or beyond, take care, and we'll be ready to talk some more Timberwolves basketball.